OpenBSD version 6.7 is coming out this month. That fact made me realize that I've been using the OpenBSD operating system as a full-time daily driver for a little over a year and a half now. I started playing around with it at some point after the release of version 6.3 and then went all in when version 6.4 came out, nuking and paving over my previous Arch Linux installation on my laptop. I'll do a video talking about my experience using it so far, but that got me thinking about what it was that made me start using it in the first place. Why did I choose it, and why did I choose to stop using my longtime love, Arch Linux, altogether? My first Linux install was Ubuntu, like everybody else, and then I quickly moved to Debian to get a little less bloat, and so my server admin friends would stop making fun of me for using Ubuntu. After a while, I wanted to learn a little more about Linux and to have a more minimalist base installation with more control over what went into it. Linux from scratch was intriguing for like the learning aspect of it, but I didn't think I could use it long term. Gentoo looked great, but I wasn't too comfortable compiling stuff, and it seemed like a little more work than I wanted to take on. I've still never used Gentoo, so I don't even know if that's true. It's just what I thought at the time. Enter Arch Linux. It was gaining popularity, but this was still before the uh, I use Arch by the way memes, which I found hilarious because uh, when they came out, I was definitely sometimes that guy. I had found what I wanted in Arch, a minimalist Linux distro that could help me learn a bit more and that wasn't LFS or Gentoo. I used Arch for somewhere between three to five years. I really don't remember. Um, a relatively long time anyway, like committed relationship long. But eventually, my eyes started wandering. It wasn't that I really disliked Arch. I actually still use it to edit these videos since my desktop hardware seems to play nicer with Kden Live on the default Arch settings than on OpenBSD. But anyway, I still like Arch. But I had gotten what I wanted out of it, and at the same time, my requirements for an OS had expanded to the point that it was time to start looking for something else. When it came time to look for a new OS, I had four main criteria. Number one was security. I'm a security engineer by trade, mostly network security and now uh, cloud security stuff and DevSecOps stuff. I have a degree in cybersecurity, I have my CA, SSP, CEH, and a couple other certs, and I've worked in the industry for a while now. So, needless to say, it's pretty high on my list of requirements. There's no perfectly secure OS, but it should be a priority for my ideal OS, just like it is for me, not a bolt-on afterthought. My second criterion was learning. It needs to help me meet my specific learning goals. I want to learn the OS well, and I also want to learn systems and kernel programming in uh, Go and C, respectively. To do that, I need it to be simple and learnable. Any OS I use, I want to learn it inside and out. I want to understand all the utilities and pieces I can. The code base shouldn't be massive if I want to actually try and read it. Granted, that all may take a while, so it needs to be relatively stable. In Unix, there's always six ways to code a cat, but what I don't need is 10 more. So it also needs to have good documentation. Learning an OS well requires good documentation. Arch Linux has amazing documentation, so I was pretty spoiled. So my next choice would need to be similar in that sense. My third criteria was, third criterion, I guess you would say, is simplicity. It needs to be relatively minimalist. Um, it needs to have an easy, logical, consistent configuration, be it on the desktop or on the server. My fourth criterion is no systemd. So after reading both sides of the argument, my opinion on systemd has changed over the years. It isn't the devil some people make it out to be. It can actually be quite nice if that's how you want your system to operate. Problem is, I don't. Uh, I don't like it, I don't trust it, and frankly, I don't want it. It's a large, relatively new code base and utilities rather than a smaller, more well-tested and understandable utility and code base. Like I said, I want to understand my system. The last thing I want to have to, is to learn the system D way of doing things on top of the still existing utilities for doing the same stuff. I also don't like how extensive it is. Um, yes, a lot of system D fans will point out 
You don't have to use all of system D. You can just use the init system and any other pieces of it you want to. The problem is that system D and most, if not all of its accompanying utilities and configuration changes are now the default on most distros. It takes some effort to actually revert a system to using less of it. So this goes back to being learnable and simple. If I have a choice between the new hotness and something simpler, I'm probably going to go with the simpler one if it's help, if it helps me meet my goals. And in this case, it does literally seem to want to take over your entire system, as the name would suggest. It wants to be system D. It wants to become the system daemon and the main way your system runs. And uh, I just don't want that. Those are my four criteria. Now, I don't actually game or anything, and I prefer tiling window managers, the command line, and vintage ThinkPads because I'm that guy. So the latest, greatest hardware support was not a factor here. Most any choice, as long as it runs my ThinkPads and can drive my 3440 by 1440 ultra wide monitor because I'm not Amish, will meet my hardware needs. There were a few options I considered as a replacement in the while that I had been thinking about this. Since I was on Arch already, Parabola seemed like a logical next step that would meet all my requirements if I just ripped out the system D and used OpenRC. Hardened Gen 2 also met all my requirements and I felt a bit better about building, compiling software at this point. Void Linux, FreeBSD, and NetBSD were also on the table. I read through the documentation and reviews for all of these systems and each one of them are great projects in their own right. In the back of my mind though, I knew I wanted to try out OpenBSD first. If I didn't like it, I could always move on. After researching, I found they had all the packages I needed and or I could find equivalents thereof, so I was ready to give it a go. So that's what I did. I installed OpenBSD on one ThinkPad, and then another, and then another, and I was hooked. The more I got to know it, the more I liked it. It met all my requirements, security. They actually have one of their explicit purposes as security. There are very few systems with this as a primary objective. So in my mind, there really aren't a lot of choices in this space. That alone is very attractive to me. It's got a smaller code base. The Linux code base is huge and just, just keeps growing. It has a lot of stuff I will never use. And of course, OpenBSD does too but not nearly as much, and they're better about removing any dead code. So it also has code review, which is one of the tenets of a secure software development lifecycle. Working in technology, I can tell you this practice is not common enough, unfortunately. OpenBSD actually takes this seriously, and it shows in how small the code base is, and the fact that code is actually removed when it's unmaintained, insecure, or no longer relevant. It also has some cool security mitigations. They implement certain mitigations by default before other operating systems due to their explicit goal of security. They also have some novel approaches as well. Now, people can argue the effectiveness of certain mitigations, but the mindset behind turning on um, these mitigations by default is really important to me. So, learning. Coming from Linux, there were a few things that took some getting used to, but OpenBSD appeared to be simpler and the kind of learning platform that I was looking for in most respects. When it came to learning C, I figured why not learn it the right way from these guys who try and do it securely and correctly. As far as learning Go goes, Golang is available for the platform so I can practice away on that. Also, it is very stable and doesn't change too quickly for me. Documentation wise, it is famous for their man pages and their frequently asked questions, their FAQ page is pretty great as well. On the simplicity front, it's relatively minimalistic. Of course, if you compile your own Linux kernel and you hand install every package on the system, like with Arch, you're going to wind up with a very minimalist system. That's just how that goes. But for a complete and holistic operating system like OpenBSD is, it's relatively minimalist. As I mentioned, the code base is very small. And while the code has a ton of useful utilities built in, it isn't bloated and there isn't too much extraneous stuff. Configuration is very logical on OpenBSD, which I find very refreshing. Configuring a desktop and a server is fairly straightforward once you read the docs and get used to not having to Google things as much. Finally, there is no systemd 
insight anywhere. Of course, OpenBSD uses the RC init system. It's been battle tested for decades and I happen to like that. I'm also 99% sure they're not going to bail on it in favor of systemd or any type of experimental thing ever, which is very comforting. It even had a few other concepts that intrigued me. Like I mentioned, OpenBSD is a real whole operating system rather than just a kernel plus packages such as GNU plus Linux. It's another one of those things that the OpenBSD devs took care of already and that I don't have to expend mental energy thinking about choosing or installing and configuring and securing. Of course, there are plenty of other little conscious or unconscious things here and there that come into play in our everyday decisions, but these were the driving factors behind me deciding to move away from Arch Linux and to choose OpenBSD as my OS of choice. My motivations and needs and preferences are going to be unique to me, but there are plenty of other people out there who have come to the same conclusion that I have and have chosen OpenBSD as well. Don't take my word for it, or anyone else's for that matter. If any of these things that I've said ring true for you, then give OpenBSD a shot. See if it's right for you. If you still want more information, I'll have a video coming out soon about my experience with OpenBSD over the last year and a half, what I like, what I dislike, and whatnot. Like and subscribe to stay tuned for that and plenty of other content dealing with privacy, security, and self-hosting. And remember, just because you're paranoid doesn't mean they aren't out to get you. See you next time.